Good morning, BookTube. This is Kelly with Books I'm Not Reading. And I just wanted to do a really brief October wrap-up. Um, I've already talked about one of the books I read in October, which was uh, Lethal White by Robert Galbraith, J.K. Rowling. Either way, you want to look at that. Uh, so I've already reviewed that book. Um, I'm not going to rehash that again. But I did want to talk about the other two books that I read in October. The first one is called Murder at the Brightwell by Ashley Weaver, and this is the first book in the Amory Ames mystery series. I actually first heard about this series on Steve Donahue's channel, and uh, so we, I decided to yeah, give it a shot, and I loved it. <laughs> I, I is, it is just a really clever, um, well-written, and... Yeah, I mean, there's a few a few times where I'm like, oh, it's kind of a, obviously a clue that you're overlooking or something along those lines. But for the most part, I found the dialogue really crisp and sharp and witty. Uh, and I just got a tremendous kick out of this book. So I definitely recommend uh, checking out this mystery series for those of you who read mysteries but don't like gore or horror or anything. You won't find anything like that in here. So, the other book that I read is The Red Breast by Joe Nesbo. I think there's a couple issues going on with my experience of reading this book. The first one is publisher. So, when I bought this book, this was the, f the first book translated in into English. Um, in the Harry Hole detective series, but it's actually number three. Again, so when I bought it, like this was the only one out there available that had been translated. I couldn't read books number one and number two. And um, I'm sure now, of course, the first two are available, but this is the one I owned and so I went with it and of course there are characters and relationships and descriptions of things that probably would have filled in some of some of the gaps in this book for me if I had read those first two books. So that's not Joe Nesbo's fault, so that's just, you know, that's just the way it is. I also wonder if there are some translation issues with this book. There's one particular interest where there's a band playing, and the name of the band is The... The? <laughs> that might be a copy editing issue, I don't know, but I was very confused about that. So, and then there is what Joe Nesbo wrote, and, you know, when you're writing a series about a detective that carries on throughout the series, they need to be a really compelling person for me, anyway, to enjoy them. Uh, I need to know good things about them, bad things about them. I, this Harry Hole um, is a, a, an alcoholic, um, sometimes on the wagon, sometimes off the wagon. The other thing is, in this particular book, which I'm sure is different from the other Harry Hole novels, is that it moves back and forth in time quite a bit. So it starts in 1999 and then we go to 2000, but in the meantime, in the interim, and they're very, very short chapters, it goes back to World War II to a set of characters um, in 1944 who are fighting with the Nazis. So I found it very hard to kind of keep track of what was happening in the current moment and also what was happening with characters in the past and keeping all of their names um, and characteristics, uh, you know, separate uh, to try to figure out what what's going on. The other thing is that uh, Joe Nesbo does make a brief mention, it's a very small part of the book, but does talk about multiple personality disorder and I just feel like you have to be really careful if you're going to bring that up 
as an issue in a book uh, because it is, I don't know, it felt, it felt gimmicky to me. Um, I'm trying to think, I have to take notes. And I really, really don't want to, I don't want to do any spoilers or anything like that for you. I will say, for me, the most interesting character in the book, and Harry Hole is like a ways down the list as far as most interesting characters in this book. Um, the most interesting character in the book dies um, probably less than halfway through the book. I don't know. For me, the most interesting character for me. I'm not saying that's true for, for other folks, but once that character had died, wow, it was really hard to come back to this, uh, to this story. So, I think I might actually get rid of this book. I don't know if I've ever said that on this channel, but I don't think I'm going to hold on to it. Um, I've held on to it for a really, really long time, and uh, so I need to make room for some other things on the bookshelves, and yeah, so kind of a bummer. And I will say too, just as I was saying with the Amory Ames book, you know, if you, if there is definitely um, some intense graphic violence in this book, it's not, I mean, it's not by any means like all the way through the book or anything like that, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's intense. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of let go of that. So those were the books I read in October three books, although Lethal White is a doorstopper. <laughs> I'm going to give myself some grace there. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to add that Jason and I participated in Cozy Reading Night last night, although we're so used to going to bed earlier that we could not make it to 10 o'clock, <laughs> so, so maybe we're working our way up to it, but it was fun. Um, we had tea and uh, got some good music on the stereo and, and enjoyed reading our books. So that was really fun and I hope to participate in that in the future. Uh, it's November, things in my, my professional life are getting really busy, so I'm not sure how often I'm gonna be able to make videos for the next few weeks or kind of on and off, we'll see what happens, but I'm hoping to record another video this weekend that I can air later um, so that I can just keep connected to all of you and I'll still be responding to comments. Uh, I'll still be looking for you guys on Goodreads and seeing what you're reading. Um, but anyway, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give me a thumbs up or tell me about what's going on in your world. Oh, and I, had, I did have a question. Because I know I have some Scandinavian uh, subscribers, and so I want to know what, how the Harry Hole mystery series is viewed. If you're in Norway, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I think there's at least one of you out there from Norway. So tell me what people in your own country think of this. And and again, like if I if I'm wrong, <laughs> so so if I do need to go back and read those first two books. Um, and that it is worth the series, like, let me know that as well. So, all right, you guys, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching.